Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today, guys, we are reading more. You know what? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And guys, we are reading chapter three. Chapter three, guys. Let's get to page chapter three. And so, guys, let's get started with Chapter 3, Edmund and the Wardrobe. Chapter 3. Lucy ran out of the empty room into the passage of found the other three. It's all right, she repeated. I've come back. What on earth are you talking about, Lucy? About us, Susan? Said, Why, said Lucy in amazement. Haven't you all been wondering where I was? So you've been hiding, haven't, have you? Said Peter. Poor old Lou. Hiding and nobody noticed. You will have to hide longer than that if you want people to start looking for you. But I've been away for hours and hours, said Lucy. The others all stared at one another. Batty, said Edmund, tapping his head quite, quite batty. What do you mean, Lou? asked Peter. Asked Peter. What I said, answered Lucy. It just must af it, it was just after breakfast when I went into the wardrobe. And I've been away for hours and hours, and had tea. All and all sorts of things have happened. Don't be silly, Lucy," said Susan. "We've only just come out of that room a moment ago, and you were there then." She's not being silly at all," said Peter. "She's just making up a story for fun, aren't you, Lou?" Just making up a story for fun, aren't you? Aren't you, Lou and Lou? And why shouldn't she? Do Peter? I'm. I am not. She said, "It's it's magic. It's a magic wardrobe. There's a wood inside it, and it snows. It's snowing, and there's a fun." fun. And a fawn and a witch, and it and it's called Narnia. Come and see. The others did not know what to think, but Lucy was so excited that they all went back, back. They all went back with her into the door room. She rushed ahead of them, flung open the door of the wardrobe, and cried, "Now." Go in and see for yourselves. Why, you goose, said Susan, patting her head inside and pulling the fur coats apart. It's just an ordinary wardrobe. Look, there's a back of it. Then everyone looked in and pulled the coats apart. And they all saw Lucy herself, saw a perfectly ordinary wardrobe. There was no wood and no snow, only the back of the wardrobe with hooks on it. Peter went in and wrapped his knuckles on it to make sure that it was solid. A jolly good hoax, Lou, he said as he came out again. You re have re you have really taken us in. I must admit, we have, we have believed you. But it wasn't a hoax at all, said Lucy, really and truly. It was all different a moment ago. Honestly, it was, it was I promise. Come on, Lou, said Peter. That's going a bit far. You've had your joke. Hadn't you better drop it now? Lucy grew very red in the face and tried to say something. The though she hardly knew that what she was trying to say and burst into tears for the next few days she was very miserable 
she could have made it up with the others quite easily at any moment, if she could have brought herself to say that the whole thing was only a story, made up for fun. But Lucy was a very truthful thing, a truthful girl, <laughs> and she knew. That she was really in the right, and she could not bring herself to say this. The others who thought she was telling a lie and a silly lie too made her very unhappy. The two elder ones did this without meaning to do it, but Edmunds could be spiteful, and on the occasion, he was spiteful. He sneered and jeered at Lucy. And kept on asking her if she'd found any other new countries, in other cupboards, all over the house. What made it worse was that these days ought to have been delightful. The weather was fine, and they were out of the doors from morning to night, bathing. Fishing, climbing trees, and lay lying in the heather, but Lucy could not probably enjoy any of it. And so things went on until the next day, the the day when it came to the afternoon, and there was still no sign of a break in the weather. They decided to play hide and seek. Susan was, Susan was it. And as soon as the others scattered to hide, Lucy went to the room where the wardrobe was. She did not mean to hide in the wardrobe because she knew that would only set the others talking again about the whole wretched business. But she did want to have one more look inside, for by this time she was beginning to wonder herself. Whether Narnia and the Fun had not been a dream, she a dream. The house was so large and complicated, the full of the hiding places that she thought she would have time, would have time to, to have, one look into the wardrobe, and then hide somewhere else else. But as soon as she reached it, reached it, she heard steps in the passage outside, and then there was nothing for it but but to jump into the wardrobe, and hold the door closed behind her. She did not shut it properly because she knew that it would it is very silly to shut oneself in the wardrobe. Even if it is not a magic one. Now the steps she had heard were those Edmund, those of Edmund, and he came into the room just in time to see Lucy vanishing into the wardrobe. He at once see Lewis vanishing into the wardrobe. He at once decided to get into it himself, not because he thought. It a particular, particular good place to hide, but he cut, be, but because he wanted to go on teasing about her imaginary country. He opened the door. There were the coats hanging up as usual, and the smell of, of, mothballs and darkness and silence. And no sign, uh, and no sign, of Lucy. She thinks I'm Susan. She thinks I'm Susan. Come to catch her," said Edmund to him, himself. And so she's keeping very quiet at, in at the, in at the back. He jumped in and shut the door, forgetting what a very foolish thing, this is to do. Then he began feeling about for Lucy in the darkness. He had expected to find her in a few seconds, and 
was very surprised when he did not. He decided to open the door again and let in some light, but he could not find the door either. He didn't like this at all and began gropping wildly in every direction. He even shouted, Lucy, Lou, where are you? I know you're here. There was no answer, answer, and Edmund noticed that his own voice had a curious sound, not the sound you expect in a cupboard, but a kind of open air sound. He also noticed that he was unexpectedly cold, and then he saw a light. Thank goodness, said Edmund. The door must have swung open on of its own accord. He forgot all about Lucy and went toward the light, which he thought was the open door of the wardrobe. But instead of finding himself stepping out into the spare room, he found himself stepping out from the shadow of some thick, dark fir, fir trees into an open place in the middle of the wood. There was crisp, dry snow under his feet and more snow lying on the branches of the trees. Overhead, there was a pale blue sky, the, short, the sort of sky one, sky one sees on a fine winter day. In the morning, straight ahead of him, he saw between the tree trunks the sun just rising very red and clear. Everything was perfectly still, as if he were not only living creature, living creature in that country. There was not even a robin or a squirrel among the trees, and the and the woods stretched as far as he could see in every direction. He shivered. He now remembered that he had been looking for Lucy, and also how unpleasant he had been to her about her imaginary country, which now turned out not to have been imaginary at all. He thought that she must be somewhere quite quite close, and so he shouted, Lucy, Lucy, I'm here to I'm here too, Edmund. There was no answer. She's angry about all the things I've been saying lately, thought Edmund. And though he did, he did not like to admit that he he had been wrong. He also did not mu did not much like being alone in this strange, cold, quiet place. So he shouted again. I say, Lou, I'm sorry. I didn't believe you. I see. Now you were right all along. Do come out. Do come out. Make it, Pax. Still, there was no answer. Just like a girl, said Edmund to himself, sulking somewhere and won't accept an apology. He looked around some him again and decided he did not, did not much like this place and had almost made up his mind to go home when he heard very far off in the wood a sound of bells. He listened, and off in the wood of a, a sound of bells. He listened, and the sound came nearer and nearer, and by last there swept in to a, a, sight, a sledge drawn by two reindeer. The reindeer were about the size of Shetland ponies, and their hair was so white that even the snow hardly looked white compared to them. Their branching horns were glide, what, guiled and shone like something on fire. Then the sunrise caught them. Their harness was a scarlet letter and covered with bells. On the sledge driving the reindeer sat a fat dwarf who would have been about three feet high if he had been standing. He was dressed in polar bear's fur, and on his head he wore a red hood with a long gold tassel hanging down from its point. 
his huge beard covered his knees and and served him instead of a rug but but behind him on a on a much higher seat in the middle of the sledge sat a very different person a great lady taller than any woman that Edmund had ever seen she also was covered in white fur up to her throat and held a long straight golden wand in her right hand and wore a golden crown on her head her face was white not merely pale but white like the snow or paper or icing sugar except for her very red mouth it was a beautiful face it was a beautiful face in other respects but proud and cold and stern do you know who this is guys it's the witch <laughs> or the queen eh. the sledge was a fine sight as it came sweeping toward edmund the bells jingling and the dwarf cracking his whip and the snow flying up on each side of it stop said the lady and the dwarf pulled the reindeer up to so sharp that that they almost sat down they then they recovered themselves and stood champing their bits and blowing in the frosty air she aired the breath the breath coming out of their nostrils looked like smoke and that and what pray are you said the lady looking hard at edmund i'm i'm my name's edmund said edmund <laughs> rather awkwardly he did not like the way she looked at him the lady frowned is that how you address a queen she asked looking sterner than ever i beg you pardon your majesty i didn't know said edmund not know the queen of narnia cried she ha you shall know you shall know us better hereafter but i repeat what are you please your majesty said edmund i don't know what you mean i'm at school at least i was i was it's this it's the holidays now chapter four guys so guys we're gonna end this right here so guys i hope you enjoyed this um video and chapter four is called turkish delight oh i remember this in the movie so guys i hope you enjoyed this book and bye see you next time